Well, Rutgers week is here, and many of us thought this would be a week that probably would be Nebraska's toughest test in this early slate of games. And turns out Rutgers is exactly what we expected them to be, a very hard-nosed physical football team that grinds out wins. Illinois turned out to be a little better than we expected. Um, Indiana turned out to be a lot better than we expected. And But Rutgers is kind of who we thought they were. But just to dive into a little bit more, because I know we hear about you know, Rutgers is going to be tough to beat for this, that, and the third, their physicality. But what are some of the schematics that they do to beat teams, right? Offensively, I'm going to dive into their offensive system today and how they're going to try to stress Nebraska's defense and watching and doing research on their offensive coordinator, just their approach and how they want to put strain on Nebraska's defense and what Nebraska's defense can do to counter that, okay? First things first, though, if you like what I'm doing here, please consider dropping a like, leaving a comment. The likes and comments help me out so much. I can't do it without those. Um, y'all helping me get into the YouTube algorithm. So um, I do this full time. So thank y'all, everybody who who simply leaves a like, drops a comment, or even watches the video. Everything helps. So thank y'all. I'll be responding to all the comments. Drop your score predictions, how you're feeling about this game, and all that down there. But without further ado, let me just dive right into it. Okay, so just a quick brief look at the Washington game. Looking at the Washington game back. Now, if you look at that box score, you would have thought Washington blew them out in this game. Of course, that wasn't the case. Rutgers was in control of this game pretty much um, from the second quarter on, I'd say. And when I say control of the game, they led it and they they kind of had Washington on their heels, right? And it got close there at the end of the game. Um, Washington won for four in field goals. So that is one thing that Washington didn't do well that I know Nebraska probably can't take advantage of. So, But that is something to note. They went one for four in field goals and they lost by three points in this game. So... Um, Rutgers also had a field goal blocked that was eventually called that was overturned due to a substitution infraction penalty where number 27 was a foot on the field or something like that. And they had 12 men on the field, but then Rutgers ended up getting a first down off of that and scoring on the next play. So that's another thing to keep in mind too, that there are opportunities, um, where Rutgers had a field goal block against Washington. So keep that in mind. Now. One of the things I will say, Washington, 521 total yards, 314 passing, 207 rushing, 7.9 yards per play. Um, but the biggest thing right here, this is Rutgers football. Rutgers, 7 for 15 on third down. Washington was 2 for 12. Rutgers punted seven times to Washington's two, and Rutgers won the game. Okay, again, it's a hard team to look at the stats and be able to say, oh, this is what kind of team this is. And that's why I'm going to dive into a little bit of the system today. Um, overall in the season, just so you know, Rutgers number 17 nationally in terms of third down conversion at 51%, 26 of 51 last season, they were 36.7%. Okay. So a huge, huge difference. And that is the reason they've started four and Okay. A big reason, a big reason, um, without that, they're not four and right now though. So third down, getting off the field on third down is going to be key for Nebraska and the offense staying on the field on third down for Nebraska is going to be key. This game is going to come down to third downs and taking care of the football. Now looking at their offensive coordinator. Okay, so Rutgers uh, offensive coordinator, Kirk Siroka, um, he has three pillars of his offensive systems. So ball, which is taking care of the ball, execution, which is alignment, assignment, and technique, and then violence, playing harder than your opponent. So basically, ball is pretty simple. Ball security, take care of the ball, do what you got to do, do your job. Execution, alignment, assignment, technique. When they're talking about alignment, where, where are you lined up right where you need to be? Or are you out of position? Assignment, who are you assigned to? What's your zone? What's your man, right? What are What is your job on the field to do? And then technique. So all the other stuff is pre, and then technique comes after. And that's just what you've learned, right? That's That's just sticking to your training, right? Trusting your training and sticking to the fundamentals and sticking to your technique. And third, violence. Um, like I said, they said playing hard on your opponent, but he breaks that in the three phases. The early phase, which is going to be strike first. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy, Cobra Kai, do it, whatever. Uh, middle of the play, straining the defense. Um, essentially, he described like a run play. Six more inches of daylights could be the difference between a touchdown and nothing, you know? So, and then finishing the play. So he says your players are either engaged in a block um, or they're chasing the ball or they're leading the ball. Nobody's standing around. Nobody's not doing something. Everybody on the field is playing to the whistle. And again, very on brand with Rutgers. 
Um, and for what it's worth, Kurt Sirocco was also at Minnesota in 2022. So he has three years of experience with Ethan Calic Manis there. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, part of the reason why Calic Manis uh, came over to Rutgers. But um, now with the, the biggest thing with um, when it comes to the offensive system that he wants to run, right? So what they're going to do is they're going to be running a lot of, um, you know, zone running schemes, power run schemes, but then off of that, they're going to give you some, you know, run pass options. Um, they're going to give you, you know, some some different type of of looks in terms of everything is going to be based off of the same look. And what I mean by that is when they run an outside zone, right? Versus when they run a little, you know, play action pass off of it or a RPO off of it, everything is going to look the same. The blocking, everything that they do, like that's what it comes down to when it comes down to fundamentals and technique. And that's why sometimes it's hard to stop this offense. They're going to try to beat you with quick hitting stuff. But what they want to do is they want to manipulate the box. And, and this is what he talks about. He, he talks about putting the offense at an advantage um, over the defense. And if you're disadvantaged in a certain area, will you attack the other area? So let's say they got eight men in the box, right? And you got six blockers. Okay. Well, if they got eight men in the block box and you got six blockers, well, if you run an RPO quick slant, right, you got a little bit of, you got numbers out there, right? And so it's just manipulating those things, you know, getting guys out of position, manipulating the eyes, something that Illinois did very well against Nebraska and a lot of their quick hitting stuff. So it's complimentary football. Um, you know, the RPOs and everything that they play off is just run action passes as well. So run action passes are going to be a little different than RPOs. Um, but all three of those things are key cogs in what they do, and they all play off of each other. Okay. Another thing that they like to do is attack dual responsibility players. Um, attacking dual responsibility players means, let's say you have a guy who, um, for instance, John Bullock on the Tampa 2 last week. Let me go ahead and I'll I'll show you kind of when when – John Bullock had that interception and he was talking about being in Tampa too and dual responsibility, right? Let's, let's talk about it for a second. So when we're looking at Tampa two and the coverage of Tampa two, right? So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to have four men up front, right? So four men up front, and then you're going to have a linebacker here. You're going to have a linebacker here, a linebacker here, right? You're going to have your outside corners. They're going to be impressed man. So press man on the outside, and you're going to have your two deep safeties, right? Okay, so what John Bullock was talking about when he's talking about Tampa 2 and his interception and being where he needed to be for that interception on Tampa 2. So just looking at this, so you're going to have these guys kind of, you know, dropping back on their man, um, you know, covering their man, and these safeties are going to drop, you know, back and cover the deep halves of the field like they're supposed to. And then this linebacker right here, the thing about Tampa 2, this linebacker, is going to be covering the deep middle of the field. So he's got to get back, okay? So what was he talking about when he talked about them attacking Nebraska um, and trying to take advantage of this Tampa 2 look? So what they did was they were – Purdue had, of course, they had their linemen here, right? And then they had a couple of guys up here that are just kind of running little run outs, right, to get these guys away. But they had their running back over here, and they snuck their running back out of the backfield. They had a receiver over here. And they snuck him kind of into this deep middle right here. Okay. So what that did was Bullock's right here. So this is going to be John Bullock down here. Okay. So what they were trying to do on that is basically when this running back came out of the backfield, they wanted to draw Bullock up. Right. And with this guy dropping to the deep middle, they wanted to bring him around and be able to sit him right here. But what did Bullock do? Bullock knew what they were going to try to do. He saw that running back come out of the backfield, but he stepped over in front of that ball and he picked it off. Okay. So terrible drawing, but hopefully you understood the description there. Um, and that is kind of what they're going. Rutgers is going to want to try to do. Rutgers is going to want to try to really um, kind of move those linebackers around in the second level. Illinois did a very good job of that when they would attack the middle of the field or when they would attack the outsides. Basically, what they would do is they would do quick hitches, quick out routes, stuff like that, little dig routes, and that would open up the middle of the field. And then whenever they would run the ball, it would bring linebackers into the box. So during the Illinois game, what you saw a lot of is, you know, 
Bullock would be a step shaded inward because he is now having to try to step over to stop the run, right? Because of the threat of the run. And we weren't getting enough run stop from our, you know, assigned D line or assigned looks. And so a dual responsibility player, and that would be kind of John Bullock, where he's looking to step in or he's looking to step back out and, and cover the pass. And they want to attack those type of guys and get them on their heels. That's what Illinois did very well is they got them on their heels. So I think this would be a good test for Nebraska's defense to see how they've recovered from that. Um, and then, you know, they're, let's see, let me go to, 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 to attention to detail. Talked about that RPO. Um, you know, they like to run glances to the single side receivers. So whenever you have, you know, a receiver over the top, let's say, um, let's say they attack outside zone, right? Here, here's a, here's a idea of how they would attack on a few different plays. Okay. So they, let's say they start with outside zone, right? Outside zone, basically attacking the perimeter, of course, um, attacking the outside of that line. Then off of that, again, they would keep everything the same, keep all the blocking the same, but they'd run that outside zone or they'd run the inside zone and they bring those defenders down to the box. Now you get what? six, seven, eight men in the box, right? Maybe you cheat those safeties down because you have to stop Kyle Manungai. And then what are they going to do? They're going to run a little RPO or, or a run action pass, and they're going to try to beat you over the top. And or they're going to do try to beat you over the top, and then whenever you're playing back a little bit, they're going to you know try to force the inside-outside zone. And then off of that, once they bring your defense in a little bit, they're going to try to run those quick slants to the outside and or... um those glances and you know when they run the glances on the inside what they'll do after that is you know they're very good at finding voids in the soft spot of the zone um but if you you know the the way kirk describes it is said he says if you press and play heavy inside well we're going to throw a back shoulder we're going to hit a go route right um if you are off corner and heavy if you're off the corner and heavy inside well they're going to they're going to run the uh, run action pass on you you know um if the corner sits hard inside um they're going to run a, a double move on you right they're going to run a glance and go or something like that so it's just about is it, Rutgers system is very much just what it what are the defense doing and and building off of that by some some simple concepts but it worked right and it puts a lot of strain on the defense it, you know you got to be where you need to be and this is where the defense is going to get tested coming off of that game last week where you had basically um, or coming off the Illinois game where you had too many instances where Nebraska was just slightly out of position and that led to a first down or, you know, a couple of those plays coming back and it's a completely different game. This is going to be the big test to see where Nebraska has transitioned to that. Can Nebraska be in position? Can they put their eyes in the right place? Now they're going against a team with Kyle Manungai, who is a excellent running back. I'm talking about all the run, run action pass and all that stuff. None of that happens without Kyle Manungai. And Kyle Manungai is a monster of a running back as we know and he's going to be a load to bring down a load to tackle and it's going to take multiple guys to tackle him okay so nebraska's tackling needs to be sound which it which it has been um uh, it's actually better than rutgers it grades out to actually but um which it has been it has been better um but you know like i said this is kind of the approach that they want to run run kyle Manunga up the middle where are you down convert on third down they're going to really want to just put as much strain on your defense and wear you down physically as much as possible so that way eventually ultimately at the end of the game they can they can nail that final uh punch right they're they're not they're not a team that's going to come here and blow nebraska out if they win it's going to be a close hard-fought game um but that's just what they know that's their style and that's rutgers football so nebraska comes in right now i think at a seven point favorite which is a Pretty heavy line considering all things considered, but I do think they're factoring in, you know, some of the performance of the last game. The fact that Washington was able to have a lot of success offensively, but Washington could not convert on third down. Nebraska is going to need to convert on third down and get stops and get off the field on third down to beat this team. That is going to be the key. Just pay attention to that. Now, um, again, that'll bring us to the end of the video. If you like what I'm doing here, please drop a like. Let me know what you think in the comments. And subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest in Husker football. And tomorrow's live stream will be at 6 p.m. Central. I'm hoping to have Aaron Brightman on, um, who is a Rutgers analyst, to be able to break down the game fully in detail with you. So with that being said, I will see you in the next video. Peace.